Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself Jonathan M.S. Pierce. This is a Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 29th of May 2023. Let's get straight to it and go to the northeast sector, the Kupiansk to Svatva to Kremlin front line uh, or axis and on my map that looks like this. Kupiansk up here, um, Svatva further to the south there so we're just concentrating on that area to begin with. And there is talk still about Matyutivka, this kind of hamlet of two houses, if that even qualifies as a hamlet, I'm not sure, and that the Russians have uh, apparently uh, gained control of this area of land to the east of the Oskil River. So the Oskil River comes down here. And I was talking yesterday about that being unsurprising. The Ukrainians won't really want to fight with their backs to the, to the river there and they have the height advantage to the west so it's not really a great loss to to lose that that land there's not a lot there it's just sort of uh empty land i guess to as i say to the east of the river the isw american military think tank institute for the study of war says of this um that the Russians claim to have destroyed Ukrainian positions near Mazyativka. A Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces advanced from Mazyativka and expanded their zone of control in the area. Although ISW has not seen visual confirmation of this, I've not either. But it is on most mappers seem to agree that the Russians have have indeed done that. Um, and then it sort of comes out from that area. That's all we really hear about Mazyativka. Uh, a R Ukrainian serviceman serving near Kremlin reported that Russian forces regularly conduct unsuccessful ground attacks and fire prohibited gas cylinders on Ukrainian positions near Kremlin. And a Russian news aggregator claimed that Russian forces advanced southeast of Bilirivka, uh, while a mill blogger claimed that Russian forces conducted unsuccessful operations near the settlement. No visual confirmation of that. I'm going to just uh, pop into Poulet Volon's mapping here because. I've not seen this mentioned anywhere else. So we have Svatova there. And then we have the river coming down here, which is the Kherobets River between the Oskil River and the Krasna River there. This acts as a front line for a part of, of the area from Svatova to Kremena. But Putin Volon seems to indicate that the Ukrainians have gained some ground. I think that might well be in the grey zone as opposed to gaining, taking land, as you can see represented here. There's no loss of Russian territory as far as the mapping goes. Oh, actually, there is a tiny bit. Uh, they, so the, according to Putin Volon, the Russians were to the west of the river and they have lost four square kilometers of land and the Ukrainians have gained nine square kilometers, which is to say that five square kilometers was gray zone. I've not heard anything about this, but the, he obviously has a source that indicates that the Ukrainians have done um, some offensive work in that area. So as we come out of the Kupiansk area and come down to Svatova, that is in the area near Ryorodka, so Svatova is there, and then we have the river coming down here, and we just have much closer uh, front lines of, of both sides here. I've actually closed mine in line with what Poulet Volon has said, although I've not seen any confirmation of activity around this area. But anyway, the Ukrainians appear to have made some gains there, but then we come down south to the Kremina area and the Serebryansk forest to the south. Now, yesterday I talked about geolocated footage confirming the Russians were in positions just here, that they had been receiving mortar fire from the Ukrainians in that area. I don't have any other confirmation. So it could be that, that the Russians do indeed control this area of the forest, but the other mappers don't have that. Uh, so I've just put it in purple as a kind of like, yeah, think about it. And then pro-Ukrainian map, a deep state map, indicates that the Russians had gained some land just here. I already had that under Russian control as according to Syriac map, so I've not changed my mapping at all. It could just be a rejigging of the map as opposed to uh, the Russians actually taking territory, as I quite often say. There's still disagreement around this area, and the Russian claims, as according to ISW, we, I've just read to you, that there are some... Uh, uh, some limited gains, marginal gains, maybe southeast of Bilirivka. So that's probably going to be in this kind of area. I don't know, though. It's not confirmed 
by any mapper. And then really we come on down to Bakhmut again. Uh, and there has been some mapping changes both north and south of Bakhmut as according to several mappers. Um, but before we get there, let's go and look at what ISW has to say. Well, let's look at, no, let's look at War Mapper first. So War Mapper's renewed mapping of the Bakhmut area looks a little bit like this. So that's the whole Donetsk front there. Um, we can see that there is a grey zone or contested zone all around Bakhmut, uh, as well as a little bit actually quite far north of Abdivka there and down south of Marienka and around Marienka. But we're going to be concentrating on Bakhmut. And War Mapper says of Bakhmut that, yep, there's contested area all around there, but with some Ukrainian gains around Klyshchivka, particularly to the northwest. Um, now, ISW says of uh, of Bakhmut, and there's a lot of talk about Prigozhin again, uh, the Wagner Group financier has claimed that the Russian relief in place operation in Bakhmut, so the moving out of Wagner PMC troops and replacing them with conventional Russian forces, particularly the DNR or DPR, Donetsk People's Republic, uh, it may continue past the initial June the 1st date, so that's been delayed somewhat. Is that because of Ukrainian counterattacks in the area? Is it because of Ukrainian hitting logistics behind there to make that relief operation more difficult? Uh, I don't know. Tempo of Russian operations around Bakhmut remains notably low. Uh, Ukrainian general staff reported unsuccessful offensives of the Russians around Orokova, Vasilivka and Kromova, that's to the north, and Ivaniska to the south. Cherovati, Ukrainian spokesperson, has said yesterday that only one combat clash occurred near Bakhmut city in the last 24 hours. And I presume that means the city itself. So there are there, I think there are lots of clashes going on north and south in the flank to in the flanks area areas, but not in the city much itself. Geolocated footage published on May the 28th indicates that Russian forces made marginal gains west of Klyshchivka, so the Russians pushing back in Klyshchivka. Let's see whether that is indeed the case. Geo confirmed here the 3rd Assault Brigade shelling Russians taking a dump battle of Klyshchivka. Uh, so the Russians are <laughs> interesting. The Russians are in this area. I don't know whether that is actually the case. It does look like it. Uh, yep, that is literally someone uh, going for a number two. I do wonder about when you get the opportunity to do that in a war zone, uh, you know, when you've got constant bullets flying around and whatnot. Anyway, so Russians are in this position. That is to the south in Klyshchivka area. So does this represent marginal gains? This is in the grey zone, as according to Deep State Map and Yellow. This is in Ukrainian controlled land, if you can call it controlled. I mean, it's not really. It's it's probably the grey zone for all of these. So the, these are the Russian. Sorry, these are that's in Russian area, according to Deep State Map, and in the grey zone, according to the other mappers. So I don't think that shows advances. Sorry, I was confusing myself there. So again, I'm not sure that ISW is correct in saying that the Russians have made advances. You would expect Russian troops to be there on their front lines or in the grey zone probing uh, around their front lines, depending on which mapper you uh, are, are paying attention to there. Russian source claimed that Ukrainian forces continue counterattacks near Orokovo Vasilivka, that's to the north, where Russian sources claim Ukrainian forces advance up to a kilometer on the 26th, so that's two, two, three days ago. Ukrainian personnel in the Bakhmut area reportedly expressed optimism that the decreased tempo of Russian operations around Bakhmut may facilitate further limited and localized Ukrainian counterattacks. Okay, let's go and have a little look at my map to see what some of the mappers are saying about what's going on north and south. So to the north, Andrew Perpetua has changed his map to actually sit more in line with uh, Suryat maps here and show that the Russians, the Ukrainians have made uh, advances in this area. So he's pulled it back here for the Russians, actually added on a little bit for the Russians there. I don't know if that signifies a counterattack or a rejigging the map, as I often say, but it seems that the, all of these mappers pretty much now agree with kind of what's going on in this northwestern sector. Uh, but yeah, for Andrew Perpetua, pro-Ukrainian mapper, the Ukrainians have made, it appears, gains in this area. That that hole there is where 
he has shown uh, some gains. And then to the south here, Andrew Perpetua shows no gains here. But Deep State Map has shown gains for the Ukrainians in this area to the northwest of Klitschivka. So just a slight gain there. And then we have uh, some geolocated footage as well. I'll show you that in a second, though. Uh, first of all, let's go to Noel Reports, who uh, talks about, actually, no, yeah, about Bakhmut. I forgot to refer to him in, in the front line later. I'll do that at the end of my video. There are no recorded attacks in Bakhmut, he says, since the transfer of positions uh, by Wagner to regular Russian troops, the fighting has come to a standstill on the flanks. So that stands in Bakhmut. Uh, as, uh, on the flanks, especially south of Bakhmut, the Ukrainians have advanced 500 meters uh, of progress near the forest area of Klyshchivka. And that, one would assume, is going to be this area. There are forest areas there in Klyshchivka, rather than, I think, the forest further back. But, you know, I could be wrong. Or it could be this forest in the north there. So, again, a little bit vague, but uh, there you go. Um, and then we come and look at some more geolocation. So this video was shared by Noel Reports. It says, on the flanks of Bakhmut, a tank was destroyed and Russian positions taken over. Uh, and we have the Ukrainian assault battalion IDAR storming Russian positions. Also, uh, as it says, a tank was destroyed. Now, that's been geolocated uh, by Paul Jowen here to this position. And this does actually show an advance as according for the Ukrainians as according to... Uh, Syriac maps and it shows that the the Ukrainians have taken this position there so that position that the Russians were definitely holding there was geolocation of the Russians holding that several days ago that now appears to be under Ukrainian control and it could be representative of the representative of this move uh, by the Ukrainians in this area as according to deep state map uh, Andrew Perpetua already had that um, as you can see by the blue line, that is a pro-Ukrainian mapper, Andrew Perpetua. Yellow is pro-Ukrainian mapper. Deep State map and red line is a pro-Russian mapper, Syriac maps. And all of these lines indicate the Russian defensive lines because they are now on the defensive. So that is uh, what's happening there. Just to let you know that uh, reporting from Ukraine did a video on this area and indicates that actually... The Ukrainians have made some gains not only in that northern area that I've just indicated then, but also along the canal. They are making claims that the Ukrainians are attacking in two directions and that uh, they're putting the Russians under a lot of pressure from along this canal area and attacking from here. So that, that is nothing that anyone else has said. This is just reporting from Ukraine at the moment, but obviously they have their own sources. But it looks like the attacks are coming up from, from there to give them something to worry about coming from the west as well as from the north. As you can see uh, from this screenshot of their video. Um, now, I'll, I'll be watching that fairly closely. It'll be interesting to see if that is reflected in tomorrow's reports from other sources as well. Uh, just other things taking place. I showed you this video this morning. This is an electronic warfare station being hit in Solidar. You have all these bits of kit connected to each other. The, there is commentary analysis stating now that the Russians are joining up their air defenses. They're joining up their ISR a lot more uh, coherently. That's the intelligence surveillance reconnaissance. So they have adapted. They are doing a better job in terms of that. Um, so that's going to be target uh, a really important target for the Ukrainians in this current period before their counteroffensive. We have seen them explicitly target in, uh, electronic warfare in the last few weeks, as I've shown you in my news reports. Anyway, just to let you also know that uh, Rebar, the pro-Russian source, hasn't produced anything. Well, they do do a daily report, but it's basically about artillery bombardments and you know missile attacks and drone attacks no report of any uh, ground fighting at all along the entirety of the front line so i guess that tells you something about how quiet it is relatively speaking now just before i go on i said i'd uh, keep this for the end i do apologize for not having reported this at the right time i forgets i am forgetful 
Uh, the in talking about Mazia Tivka, this is Noel report saying there's clarity now about Mazia Tivka, North Kupiansk. Russian troops have taken control of the village and fighting is now taking place 500 to 1,000 metres south of there at Liman Pashi. The fate of this village is not yet alone. I, Liman Pashi, some people have as under uh, in the grey zone, as Noel reports here. I have it under Russian control. It has swapped hands, apparently. It does swap, it has swapped hands a number of times. Uh, so here. You know, no reports has that in the grey zone. You know, there, there is there is something over that. And then when he talks about Kremina, uh, Russians have intensified their attacks on Bilohorivka. Troops attack from the east whilst also forcing a breakthrough at Shiblivka towards Kremina Forest to encircle Bilohorivka. No positional changes so far, but just that could suggest that there is, there is this Russian gain southeast, as according to the ISW. But Bilirivka is under a lot of pressure. Anyway, sorry that that's out of out of chronological and geographical position. Right, to return to where I was, uh, just before we go down south, a little comment on Prigozhin. So Wagner Group financier Prigozhin appears to have again indirectly uh, undermined Russian President Vladimir Putin's authority and regime. So he said lots of stuff in the press, including if you are starting a war, please have the character will and steal balls and then you'll be able to achieve something. So that's obviously a massive insult to Putin, I would have thought. And this might be in response to Putin not having rewarded Prigozhin for taking Bakhmut. Uh, you know, Prigozhin may be attacking Putin for failing to give Prigozhin some promised reward for seizing Bakhmut. So that's what the ISW says. And that could well be the case. Uh, there seems to be this very public tussle between the not only the Russian MED and conventional Russian military and Prigozhin, but Putin and Prigozhin himself. But Putin needs Prigozhin, and that's the issue. I mean, he would have fallen out of a window already, for sure, had he not served uh, some great utility for the Russian leader. OK, moving further down south, uh, we are coming to uh, Avdivka. Just to remind you that here uh, there is, we are passing uh, places that have uh, contested areas down down to the south uh, of Bakhmut, but then also to the north of Avdivka as well, and around Krasna Harivka there. So there are there is contested um, front lines there. That's going to be around here, but also possibly I'm not quite sure what it is pertaining to. Is that somewhere around maybe this New York area where there was fighting before? Uh, Pule Vulon. Uh, I didn't show you the Bakhmut map, but it's pr pretty much in agreement with what I was saying with that that uh, gained area to the north there. And then it sort of cuts off going down south around Klishchivka. And then it goes on to Velika Novosilka, which we'll come to later. So nothing on Abdivka. And that's pretty much what it seems in the ISW. There are the usual places, repelled attacks, Povomysky, Severny, and Marienka again, just gets that kind of like mention. Uh, Russian Milbolga claimed that Russian forces regained lost positions south of Pervomysky, but sustained losses while doing so. Uh, and that there are another claims, or that same Milbolga claimed that positional battles occur near Vodjani. It's positional battles here, so nothing's really changed. Could be talking about regaining positions in this area where the, the Ukrainians pushed the Russians back south of Pervomysky. So it could be the Russians retook that, but according to their own claims, uh, they made some had took took some losses in so doing, right? And then it's uh, fighting at Novokanyove and uh, Krasno Harivka, but there have been repelled attacks uh, there, uh, attacks by the Russians in that area, Krasno Harivka and Novokanyove, but also attacks by the Ukrainians, according to the Russians, in this area of the highway there. Anyway, that's what's going on in Avdivka, and there isn't too much to report. The rest of the front line. Russian forces did not conduct conduct any confirmed ground attacks in Western Donetsk or Blast. So that's Western Donetsk would be all of this area down to Vukhladar uh, and indeed further onwards until we get to uh, the boundary of the Oblast between Donetsk and Zaporizhia. However, Pule Vulon does have a map that indicates fighting around Velika Novosilka, or at least some Ukrainian gains there, at 12 and a half square kilometers to the west of Velika Novosilka near Zelenepole and Novopil. Uh, so that has been happening, and that is in Donetsk Oblast, that's in this area there. 
I don't, I've not seen any talk about that anywhere else. So I guess we'll have to wait and see if that is uh, confirmed anywhere. But the ISW does have that on their map. Just no real com- talk about that. So I don't I don't really know what's going on there. Anyway, a Russia, unless that happened, you know, several days ago, and Pule Volon is just catching up with what ISW have have stated on their maps. But then ISW, as far as I've worked out, because I haven't reported that, didn't make mention of that in the last few days. Okay, just to finish things off here, a Russian source claimed that Ukrainian forces conducted a failed raid across the Dnipro River. Yesterday, a Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces detected and fired on Ukrainian forces as they prepared to cross. Uh, and that's consistent, as ISW says, with the kind of the activity that's going on there. So it's pretty plausible that that did happen, uh, although no direct confirmation from ISW itself. Um, and, and that's really much of a muchness for this entire area of the front line. Most of the talk, you know, in the news last night, this morning, was about the strikes, not only the strikes into Ukraine in terms of cruise missiles and drones that, that flooded the Ukrainian airspace, but also the storm shadow and probably other ordnance hitting Mariupol, Berdyansk really heavily. I mean, the Russians are taking quite some battering all along this coast by the looks of it, uh, as storm shadows are wreaking some havoc uh, for the Russians, logistically speaking, and in terms of troop concentrations, apparently, as well. So there's, uh, yeah, lots of activity softening up this region, ready, one would assume, for a counter-offensive. Just when? We don't know. Uh, Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Really appreciate you spending your time with me. Uh, Take care, and I'll speak to you in my extra video later.